God willing, look at how God is blessing the truth of God. The letters that are pouring in now out of Naples, Italy. God willing, in June, once we go to London, we are God willing, we are starting a new work now from London to Frankfurt, Germany. From Frankfurt, Germany to Spain. Now Spain is in the uproar, rioting there. Greece, which is known for Greek mythology and wonderful Greek architecture. But now they're flooding the streets of Greece by the thousands. Mm -hmm. Places you read in the Bible, Damascus, Mm -hmm. Syria. Over 8,000 been killed already in Syria. Syria. Look at what's going on through around the world. All of it fulfills scripture. That's right. Are you listening to what I'm telling you? That's right. And in the midst of the fulfillment of scripture, the truth of God hmm. is traveling yeah. from country to country, from state to state, gathering thousands. That's right. Black, white, brown, yellow, red. Doesn't matter what color you are. The book says their line has gone out into all the earth and their words even unto the ends of the world. Day unto day uttereth speech and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. So while many of you are in your beds warm, (laughs) we're somewhere preaching the word of God. That's right. In India, by the time our whole services are over, your morning services haven't even begun here in America. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, as you can see, it is more than coming together in a place like this. Oh, yes. We've got brothers standing. But the work is bigger than America. Oh, yeah. It's not about Pastor Jennings, it's about God. That's right. You that are watching, you see Pastor Jennings, you see First Church. But what you're looking at is the work of God and the hand of God and the rawest form. That's right. This message is not diluted. This message is not integrated with my personal views or feelings. That's right. What I think or what I feel don't mean nothing to God. Amen. Talk back to me. Amen. Whatever God say, He don't care if we don't like it. That's right. He don't care if it make us angry. Amen. He don't care if we lose sleep. Amen. The rule for the world is the same rule that was given in the Garden of Eden. That's right. Obey me. That's God's rule. He is not looking at how much money you have or don't have or the car you drive or the size house you live. No. What rich person owned more than God? That's right. God gave testimony about his wealth. Yeah. He says the earth, earth. is the Lord's. That's right. Well, how much, Lord, in the fullness thereof? Yes. The universe is his. That's right. When it rains, it testify of God. Yes. When it snow, yes. it testifies of God. Yes. When the sun shine and the moon set, it testifies of God. Now, God created life in the earth to reflect Him. Amen. God has no problem. With nothing that he created except that dumb, ignorant, self-will, conceited, high-minded, spineless, hard-head, stubborn, dumb as a brick, foolish man. That's right. Every 
time God designed something to save people, people fight against it. Amen. Don't they do it? Amen. He told Noah, better back for the saving of your house. God gave Noah a message that was unusual. Oh, yes. People wasn't used to rain. Mm -hmm. A mist watered the earth. But then God gave Noah a message it's going to rain. And then 40 days? 40 days. And 40 nights? Yeah. God gave man a space of 120 years. Oh, yes. To get right with him. And in the midst of that 120 years, he sent Noah and Methuselah. And Methuselah. That's right, that's right. Why? Out of the mouth of two or three witnesses. Yes. So let me worry back stab. It gave them a space of 120 years to get right. Not even 120 years hmm. was sufficient enough. My Lord. For man ignored God. Yes. Right up until the time the first raindrop came out of heaven. That's right. When it rained, started coming out of the earth, they started banging on the door of the ark. Yeah. Noah! Yes. Let us send that. Yes. Noah said, We warned you. That's right. Did we not warn you? That's right. He said, God gave you, hallelujah, 120 years. And you ignored him. My Lord. Jesus said, As it was in Noah's day, so shall it be. When the Son of Man comes. That's right. The message of holiness is unique, different, out of the ordinary, yet extraordinary. Mm -hmm. There's many thousands that are running toward, yet there are many thousands that are rejecting it. But the spiritual ark, which is the church, yeah. still is being built. That's right. <laughs> So brothers and sisters, we shall, with God's help, hmm. keep warning the human family. Amen. We are determined to remain a nuisance to the devil. That's right. We are determined to be a thorn in the side of every enemy of the scriptures. That's it. We will not bow to nothing and nobody. Amen. But God. Amen. You have to have a time in your life where you conclude that bowing to Satan is not an alternative. What do you mean bow? Just totally surrender. Yeah. If I get weak, I can accept that. Oh, yeah. But I ain't gonna bow. That's right. I'd rather get weak. Yeah. See, holding on to God, I can hold on to him mm -hmm. while I'm weak. Amen. But if I let go and take sides and agree and make a contract yeah. with the devil, yeah. now I'll bow. That's right. When I agree to give the devil my mind, soul, body, and spirit and turn on God, now the devil has become my God. Amen. So I'd rather get weak. Get weak. Oh yes. And then hold on to God. That's it. And then let the most high inject me with some good strength. Amen. Someone said, Don't you worry about backsliding? Oh no. That's out of the question. Wonderful. Well, Pastor Jennings, can you say you will never backslide? Yes. That's right. God have given me enough experience with him where he has qualified my Wonderful. tongue. Wonderful. To say, hallelujah. I will never, never, ever. Go ahead, brother. Backslide. Go ahead. It doesn't matter what kind of death surround me. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead. Because where death is, God can give life. Yeah. Amen. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. It doesn't matter what type of bondage may come upon you. Amen. Where there's bondage, God can bring liberation. Amen. The scripture says, He whom the Son has set, has set free is free indeed. Go ahead, man. So many of you in here is struggling with 
some form of weakness. Yes. Talk back to me. Yes. Go ahead. But don't give up. Amen. And don't let the devil use your weakness as an excuse of laying out a check. Go ahead. Then now you try to take your weakness and dress it up and give yourself a hypocritical justifiable reason. Amen. I don't get along with him. That devil, God don't get along with you. <laughs> That's right. But God said, Go ahead. Forsake not. Go ahead. God ain't looking at what you're going through. He said, Forsake not. Go ahead. The assembling of yourself together as the manner of some is. But so much the more. Lord, I lost my job. All right, but you come to church. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Lord, I'm tired. Yes. Come to church. Amen. Go ahead. Are you listening? It's good teacher. If we cannot endure mm. small things, mm. you won't be able to overcome the large things. That's it. That's right. Everybody, all right? Yeah. Good teacher, man. It's good teacher. To my viewers, so many of you are writing me and asking me, well, if there is no church in our area that's really preaching holiness. Should we go to church? <laughs> I'm getting so many letters asking that question around the world. Should we go to church if the church is not preaching exactly what the Lord says? Yeah. It's a waste of time. Yes. Ask yourself, would you put money in the bank that don't guarantee interest? Amen. Would you buy a car that have no wheels? <laughs> That's right. All right, let's Would you buy a pair of shoes that have no soles? No soles. What good is going to anybody's church if the word of God is not going to be preached? Let us look at what church supposed to be about. Church supposed to be centered around God. That's right. Am I right? Amen. You cannot hardly find God in church today. No. Money took the place of God in church. Yes. So now God is thrown out of the church. church. And money and wealth and entertainment yeah. have took the place of church. Mm -hmm. The devil, he is relentless in his effort. Yes, he is. Trying to destroy the church. Oh yes. So what have he done? He has infiltrated church. Yes. To get us off course. Mm -hmm. Get us off track. Yeah. The book says straight and narrow is the way that leads to life. But the devil causes us to think that broad is the way that leads to life. That's right. So Satan, being he is the enemy, Amen. he blend in among us. Yes. Posing as a brother. Oh, yes. Posing as sisters. Amen. Posing as preachers. Yes. Posing as someone that love you. That's right. I want to talk about infiltration today. Infiltration. Amen. It's good teaching. I want to educate our viewers, get your children to the screen, and you that are here. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about it from a natural perspective and from a biblical perspective. Mm -hmm. First, let's give you some natural information, some history. History. Mm -hmm. We all heard of the organization called the Federal Bureau of Investigation, mm -hmm. the FBI. Yeah. Former director was J. Edgar Hoover. Yeah. <laughs> Who was a bigot? Yes, he was. <laughs> a homosexual racist. Yes. Mm. History is best qualified to reward all research. Mm. It is true of a historical fact and documented history that he was a bigot. Yeah. 
J. Edgar Hoover hated people of color. Mm -hmm. He introduced the program that became real popular, and I want everyone to listen. Mm -hmm. It became very prevalent, real popular in the 50s and 60s. It was called counterintelligence. Right. Cointel program. Mm -hmm. In other words, if there was any organization, whether it was community or religious, for the betterment of people, to motivate a people to have progress and do better in your neighborhood, and if the message that came from the leader was very influential, mm -hmm. it caused people to flock to it, to gravitate to it. Yeah. Then, Hoover wanted that organization or that group destroyed. Yeah. So the counterintelligence program was introduced. Mm -hmm. Now, let me explain to you what this program was. Members of the FBI was hired, or members of the organization itself. Were used and paid off right. to give the FBI information about the organization, and the FBI hoped they can use it to damage. Yeah. And if there was no information used to damage the organization, then the FBI will infiltrate it themselves. That's right. And church was not exempted. Yeah. If the church believed in baptism, then FBI agents will come there and act like they're repentant. That's right. And be baptized. Amen. They will even act like they're speaking in tongues. Mm. Lord. They will jump and shout, but document what's going on. Yeah. To report back to the enemy. My Lord. The objective was to dismantle, to cause confusion, mm -hmm. to spread lies, mm -hmm. to spread rumors, yeah. to bring about weakness in every capacity where it's strong, right. and to kill the leader. That's right. Those that cater to the leader turn love into hate. That's right. Turn trust into mistrust. Mm -hmm. To make those that embrace you stand away from you. Yeah. This is how far they went. They even went as far as forging letters. Oh yes. They were write letters to spread rumors and lies about those within the organization and then sign the name of somebody in the organization that's right. to make it look like it came from a person within that's right the objective was to start friction yeah. Yeah. between those that there was no friction that's right then you get what I'm telling you Amen. if things are going forward how do you go about slowing that thing down? Cause division. That's right. That's right. So the counterintelligence program infiltrated back in those days when the nation of Islam was functioning, they called them the black Muslims. Mm -hmm. FBI came in with bow ties and suits. Oh. When Martin Luther King was demonstrating, they was in Martin Luther King's organization. When Stokey Carmichael started SNCC and the other organization Corps, yeah. they came in. The FBI would come among you and blend in so well, they would even give out flyers. My Lord. The objective is blend in. Yeah. They'll come right in first church. Shout. End up holding a position in the church? My Lord. See, the counterintelligence did not begin with Hoover. No. 
the counterintelligence began with the devil. The devil. Amen. Hova simply done things that was already done yeah. in the Bible. That's right. Already. First, I want to deal with forging letters. Yes. Amen. Because today they can do it in a very, you know, a more better way with the internet and text messaging. That's right. You know, they can send out mass texts from a computer. Yeah. And then sign, put some more name on it. Mass mm -hmm. And then put you at odds with the person and the person never sent it. That's right. That's right. To do what? Cause confusion and mistrust. And now you falsely charged. Yeah. That brother and that sister. Mm. What? Create a wedge. Amen. Send an email. Mm. Kill a reputation. See, one thing about Hoover, he was very jealous. Yeah. Jealousy is a strong motivator. Oh, yes. The book says jealousy is as cruel as the, as the grave. So you try to kill a person's character and assassinate their character. That's right. Co intel. Counter. Look at the word counter. To offset that which is in motion. That's right. Intelligence. To implement a different form of intelligence. A different way to drive the present intelligence a different direction. That's it. That's right. Let's show you forgery. Forgery. Amen. From a scriptural perspective. In the book of First Kings. Follow me. In the book of First Kings, chapter 21, we're starting at verse 1. Listen. And it came to pass after these things that Naboth the Jezreelite had a vineyard. There was a man in the scriptures named Naboth, a righteous man, a God-fearing man. Mm -hmm. He received a vineyard. Mm -hmm. It was an inheritance. Amen. He was blessed with some land. Right. Listen. And it came to pass after these things that Naboth the Jezreel had a vineyard, which was in Jezreel, hard by the palace of Ahab, king of Samaria. Yes. And Ahab spake unto Naboth, saying, Give me thy vineyard. Ahab, during this time, was king. Yeah. And lustful, jealous, he felt as though he had a right hmm. to this man's property. Mm -hmm. Because it was close to the kingdom. That's right. Listen. Give me thy vineyard. Give. He was covetous. Yes. Amen. Give me thine vineyard. That's a nice way of asking. That's right. <laughs> it ain't that. Well, do you want to sell it? No. Give you me. know, like he got rights. Yeah. Right. Listen good. Give me thy vineyard. Give me thine vineyard. That I may have it. That I may have it. Well, for, pretty bold. Amen. That I may have it. For a garden of herbs. I want it for a garden. Because it is near unto my house. As if he got some right because it's near to your house. That's right. What else? And I will give thee for it a better vineyard than it. Or now, it, he offered him a better vineyard. Mm -hmm. But in the eyes of Naboth, this thing was in his family for years. Right. And he valued the land that his fathers worked on before he got a hold of it. That's right. Listen. Or if it seemed good to thee, I will give thee the worth of it in money. Yes, I pay for it. And Naboth said to Ahab, the Lord forbid it me. Yes. That I should give the inheritance of my fathers unto thee. Listen. And Ahab came into his house heavy and displeased. Now the king was dissatisfied because Naboth would not give in. Mm -hmm. Brothers and sisters that are here. Mm -hmm. And you that are watching. When somebody wants something that belonged to you. And you won't give it to them. Right. Or if someone is jealous of you, mm -hmm. then please don't be surprised mm -hmm. what they say about you. That's right. It is a true saying that misery love company. Yes. Are you listening? That's right. Misery love company. Yeah. So if there are people that have confidence in you and respect you as a person, mm -hmm. They love the way you conduct yourself. They love the way you present yourself. Mm -hmm. And yet there's someone among you, whether it's wife, husband, cousin, brother, sister, church person. That's right. Who really got it in for you. Mm -hmm. Then they are motivated. Mm -hmm. 
the evil that is in him or that is in her is self motivation. That's right. To kill you in the eyes of others. That's right. Are you listening? Amen. So every chance he or she get, they're going to pull someone to the side yeah. or put them on the phone. Oh, yes. Because they don't want to feel negative about you by themselves. That's right. Because now they see you are ignoring them and you they're not having no success. Yeah. They're not having no success in stopping you. Amen. They're not having no success in discouraging you. Yeah. They're not having no success in bringing you down to their low level. Go ahead. They see you ignoring them. Go ahead. They see you not even turning your back. That's right. That's right. So when they see they met the don't work, yeah. they got to hire the state. Oh yes. And try something else. That's right. That's Counterintelligence. That's right. I want to soak you a little. Go ahead. Listen. And Ahab came into his house heavy and displeased. Yes, the king was unhappy. Because of the word which Naboth the Jezreelite had spoken to him. All right. For he had said, I will not give thee inheritance of my father. Yeah. And he laid him down upon his bed and turned away his face and would eat no bread. Yes. I mean, he really, really was greedy. Oh, yeah. I mean, it affected the poor fellow's appetite and all that stuff. But he had a wicked wife. But Jezebel, his wife. Who was it? Jezebel. Oh, you heard of Jezebel. Jezebel? Amen. <laughs> Old Jezebel. Jezebel, his wife, came to him. Jezebel was like a mercenary. Oh, yeah. She knocked off the prophets, prophets. with her body. That's it. That's right. Hmm? That's right. Jezebel was a mercenary. Oh, yeah. She knocked off the prophets mm -hmm. with her body. Amen. Until... Men's of God was hiding in the cave. Caves. Obadiah hid them. That's right. Came to Elijah. Was it not told you how I hid the service of the Lord in caves by fifties? Mm -hmm. uh, Elijah was the prophet that called fire from heaven. That's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but Jezebel sent him a letter. <laughs> That's right. Right. That's the bell didn't stand face to face with him. No. Just wrote him a letter. Just the letter. When the fire calling prophet. That's right. Read the letter. Mm -hmm. He took off. Took off. <laughs> what was Jezebel doing? Challenging his fire. That's it. Yeah. And he ran for his life. That's right. I want to show you the wickedness hmm. that was in Jezebel. Amen. And how she had no limitations. See, there are some people that have no boundaries hmm. until you are destroyed. That's right. You want to see a happy person hmm. that hates you? Hmm. Let them witness your demise. That's right. Let them see people believe what they tell them. Yeah. You will see them happy. You will see them jumping up in some kind of spirit. That's right. That's true. That's right. If a brother get up and preach and preach something and the one that got it in for you they, that message or that statement is hitting you. Mm -hmm. They're going to jump up and scream and be louder than anybody. That's true. But when a message come and hit them, yeah. they ain't moving. Yeah. Oh, yes. Are you listening to the old troublemakers? Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Hmm. An enemy wants those that befriend him or her mm -hmm. to feel the same way they do. That's right. Listen good. But Jezebel his wife came to him. Come on, son. And said unto him, Why is thy spirit so sad that thou eatest no bread? Yes. And he said unto her, Because I spake unto Naboth the Jezreelite. And said unto him, Give me thy vineyard for money, or else if it please thee, uh -huh. I will give thee another vineyard for it. Yes. And he answered, I will not give thee my vineyard. And Jezebel his wife said unto him, Doest thou now govern the kingdom of Israel? She had to encourage her satanic husband. That's right. 
So you not governor Israel. Don't you roll everything around here. All right. you're not in charge. That's it. Get up, man. And eat bread. Go eat. And let thine heart be merry. Be happy because I got something up my sleeve. I will give thee the vineyard. I'll take care of it. Amen. What did Jezebel say? I will give thee the vineyard. Now, counterintelligence. Yeah. Naboth was a man of honest reputation and God-fearing. That's right. And Jezebel knew it. That's right. Now, Jezebel hatched the plan mm -hmm. to get the vineyard. Mm -hmm. How? By any means necessary. That's right. She had no regard for life, so didn't phase up if he would be killed. Amen. No. But she knew she just could not murder a honest, God-fearing man, especially when the people respect them. That's right. So the first thing you got to do when someone is respected in the eyes of the people is to change the people's perspective about that man or that woman. That's right. That's the first thing you got to do. That's right. You got to kill that good reputation. Yeah. You got to kill all the good they done and all the love that they have turn it to hate. That's right. That's it. All those that embrace them now push them from them. Amen. You got to make it look good. You got to make it sound good. Yeah. And you got to make it sound convincing. That's right. You got to get everybody on your side. That's right. Who hold this man or woman in high esteem. Yeah. And Jezebel knew this. That's right. Are you listening to what I'm telling you? And Jezebel and his wife. Hoover knew this. Mm -hmm. Amen. Hoover understood the art and the craft of destroying a human being or an organization. Right. You got to kill the influence that that man or woman or that organization have over the people. That's right.